So Tyler, the stock market has had a pretty solid year so far in 2023. It's up about 17% year to date, but not all businesses are in the same boat. Overall, things have rebounded nicely, but there are a few stocks that are at or near their 52-week lows. That What's going on with them? So one that I, in particular, have my eye on, it's a company that I've owned for quite some time. It's Block or Square, whichever you want to call it. Ticker symbol is SQ. Most people still refer to it as Square, uh, but the fit business has officially changed its name. Momentum has been pretty strong on both the personal and business sides. Now, the company has made some, uh, if I'm being honest, missteps lately. Uh, it completely overpaid for, for Afterpay, um, for example, when it acquired that. Um, I'm pretty sure the price it paid for, it agreed to pay for Afterpay is not that far from the block's entire market cap today. Um, Thankfully, it was an all-stock deal, so it's not like they handed over that much cash. Um, but a lot of people don't realize how well the Cash App is doing. Uh, 54 million active users. Peer-to-peer -peer payment volume on Cash App is roughly $200 billion annually. Um, on the business side, which is actually still technically called Square, not to confuse anybody, um, payment volume is at about $220 billion annualized. And the real value here from a long-term perspective, there's two things. One, there's a lot of ability to add adjacent services, um, especially on the Cash App side. They've, the company has said in the past that it wants Cash App to be able to do pretty much whatever your bank can do. So there's a lot of room to build out adjacent money-generating services there. Um, same on the business side, but to a lesser extent. And international growth remains a very big um, opportunity. Only about 16% of Square's gross profit comes from, from international markets. That's roughly doubled over the past two years, so it's making a lot of progress there. But I could see that being a big driver of future growth. And with the stock down significantly, it's just over its 52-week low. It's down about 80% from the 2021 highs. I think it's kind of overreacted in, in the negative direction. And I've owned this since two days after its IPO, and I plan to add to my position. We'll do a bull bear on block later. But uh, <laughs> what, so 52-week low, uh, one I've followed for a while and one that I've had, you know, I've kind of flip-flopped on a few times is uh, Safehold. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, Safehold is a real estate investment trust that specializes in ground leases. So rather than owning any of the buildings, they actually buy the land underneath. So they, they get, you know, rights to the land. And then they, you know, the company that owns the building sell, you know, basically rents the land, not too dissimilar than like a tenant renting a, a portion of a building. It's kind of a new creative uh, way of financing uh, uh, development in the real estate industry, you know, it, you know, like the, the sale leaseback transaction that you see with companies like Realty Income, it's kind of the same idea, but we're just doing it with the land, with the idea being like the land value is going to go up over time, regardless if there's a building there or not. So that's the general thesis for this company. But as, as you had mentioned in previous videos, um, it is a very, uh, we'll call it a slow, steady cash flow business. And slow, steady cash flow businesses in a, in a high interest rate environment get absolutely walloped. And that's been the case with uh, Safehold as of late. Because interest rates have gone up so quickly, a lot of, you know, how they make their money is leasing long term and, you know, borrowing at short term. Because short term rates have gone up so quickly, their, their profitability has gone down quite a bit. Their cash spread right now, which is basically like the difference between cash coming in the door percentage and you know their debt, their debt uh, yield or income out is 15 basis points. So that's very very thin, uh, not great. But here are the encouraging things: is this kind of innovative financing model is getting a lot of attention in high rate high rate interest environments. You know, somebody doesn't want to take on. Uh, a construction loan at nine percent, they'll take on a ground lease at you know four or five percent and fund a, a portion of development that way or the acquisition of a property. And even though we're in a higher rate environment, they're still building on that portfolio. They're still uh, originating a lot of ground leases. The actual overall value of the portfolio is going up, and new leases are obviously going to price in interest rates. So 
you know, there there is some interest rate protections that they talk about, but it, it's hard to protect against this kind of whirlwind of interest rate increases we've had recently. But I think overall, it's one that has just gotten crushed, but something that I'm going to be watching. I think there there might still be something there, despite stock mar- uh, the market's kind of meh reaction to safe hold as of late. Yeah, I mean, in normal environments, the ground leasing model, which is, you know, 99 year leases or something to that effect is a strength, but that's actually a negative when you're talking about a rising rate environment or and especially an inflationary environment, because inflation is somewhat built into leases usually, but not to the extent where it's going to jump eight or 9% year over year on a 99 year lease. Um, so that's one thing, but I, we are seeing some insider buying with safe hold actually, which is pretty encouraging. I like the ground leasing model. It's one of those examples of a boring business. It doesn't get much more boring than, you know, leasing a piece of land. Uh, But it's a boring business that could really have great economics over the long term for patient investors without a lot of downside risk. So I like that pick. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to click subscribe if you don't subscribe to my channel already. And as always, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. Be sure to visit www.fool.com slash Frankel to receive the top 10 best stocks to buy now.